Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here in what some are calling the calm before the storm. The storm being the economic tsunami of rapid inflation, severe shortages, and layoffs due to the largest and most disruptive port strike in the last five decades. But just how concerned should you be? What don't they want you to know? And how can you protect yourself? Well, in case you missed it, this week, 50,000 members of the International Longshoremen's Association are on strike in the nation's east and Gulf Coast ports, which means that about half of all U.S. imports, billions of dollars of imports as well as exports, are now frozen. And this impacts everything from household goods to auto parts, you name it. And while many people online are making light of the situation, talking about how we might have to go without bananas for a couple of weeks, this is actually far more serious. When people ask me, Taylor, how concerned should I be? Something that not enough people are talking about is that many of the things that move through these part ports are American factory parts. American factory parts that are essential to keep factories operating. So what we are going to see, as I'm going to explain here in a minute, is many different components coming together that are going to create this kind of pressure cooker situation. It's not as simple as prices are just rising because of simple supply and demand. No, we are also going to see a slowdown in production. That could mean reduced hours, more layoffs, we know that the economy is not great. I mean, they'll tell you it's great, but you and I both know that unemployment is rising and that growth is slowing. What's going to happen if production suddenly halts in the United States? This is going to have a serious ripple effect. And some will say too, oh, well, that will never happen. This is an election year. They're not going to let that happen. Well, fun fact, the Biden administration could put a stop to this today if they wanted to. They could invoke the Taft-Harley Act to force workers back on the job. So why haven't they? Well, let me ask you another question. What are you seeing in the news about these port strikes? Because most of the time when something like this happens, especially a month before an election, it's going to be downplayed, right? It's going to be not that big of a deal, no reason to concern, no reason to panic, don't stock up. But in fact, what I'm seeing is actually the opposite of that. I'm seeing a lot of headlines saying that this is incredibly serious, that we should be prepared, and that this could drag on far longer than expected. Now, why would they have that in the news? Well, the answer came to me pretty quickly. It's because now they have something they can point a finger at. The Federal Reserve and the United States government obviously love to claim that they beat inflation, that they have inflation under control. You and I both know that that's not true because we're sitting here having lost 25% of our purchasing power in the last four years. A more accurate statement is that inflation has slowed. It's still happening and we're never getting that 25% back, but inflation has slowed. But what else do we know? that the battle has not been won, especially when the Federal Reserve was forced to choose between inflation and job growth. They chose gro job growth. They chose to make sure that unemployment didn't keep rising by doing a 50 basis point rate cut. What that signaled to us is that inflation was going to continue to rise. But now suddenly we have a scapegoat. Oh, why is inflation rising? It's because of this situation over here. Why is unemployment rising? It's because of this situation over here. And I'm not suggesting that this isn't going to impact inflation already on its own. Of course it will. You can't have billions of dollars, half of all imports in the United States suddenly stop and tell me that that's not going to hurt our economy. Yes, it will. But it's also going to cover up a lot of other things that were already happening. And as far as the economy goes, I saw this article here, a port strike could cost the economy $5 billion per day. $5 billion per day, let that sink in. Really think about what that means. In one month, if this were to go on for 30 days, what is that, $150 billion? $150 billion, that's about 9% of what the United States spends on social security 
in a year. One tenth of what we're spending on social security would be lost in our economy just because of this port strike. So we have this tremendous amount of money that's no longer coming into the economy. We've got supply and demand issue making prices go up and we've got factories that are probably going to have to halt production, further hurting the economy and the American workers. Is that everything? Well, I wish it was, but I saw another article that jumped out to me calling out something that no one's talking about from CNBC. It says here that much of the focus of this has been on the economic impact from a direct hit to the economy. But business experts are also warning about the risk of persistent wage inflation making its way into supply chain prices that the Federal Reserve has recently been successful in taming. Okay, well, I don't know about that. What I think is really going on here is a secret that the Federal Reserve and the government don't want you to know, which is that wages have not kept up with inflation. Now, I guess it's not a secret. You probably already knew that. I know that most people, when they talk about wages keeping up with inflation, are only referencing the upper echelon of earners. Most Americans have not had their wages keep up with the cost of living, as is evident from grocery and household bills. We know that. But what this is saying is that if wages did keep up with the, another way of saying this, they're saying, oh, wage inflation is a bad thing. Well, it is, but what they're really saying is if people were actually paid what they should be to keep up with the cost of living, we have wage inflation, which means that now probably cost of goods and services are going to go up too, inflation all the way around. Part of the reason why the Federal Reserve has been successful in keeping inflation under control is because wages have not risen with the cost of goods and services. Yeah, they put the brakes on everything, but at what cost to the American people? Now listen, in terms of what you need to know about what's coming next, I fully expect that our prices are going to go up, whether it's at the pump or in line at the grocery store. As someone who has a background in emergency preparedness, I absolutely believe that you should have food, water, essentials for you and your family, absolutely. That's in the short term and I think everyone should have that no matter what's going on, port strike or not. But another component that I really wanna make sure everyone is prepared for is that no matter how you slice and dice this, inflation is going to come roaring back which means that the value of your dollar today is going to be worth more than it is tomorrow or in a week or in a month. The war on your dollar will continue. You are going to continue to lose your purchasing power, which means that any value, any assets you have in dollar denominated currency, whether that's your savings account or your 401k, you name it. And this is important for everyone, but especially for people who are nearing retirement or are retired on fixed incomes because I know you only have one shot. You can't mess around here and what we need to make sure is that we're protected outside of the dollar. Because the truth is, I know a lot of people are waiting, waiting to make a decision on what they should do based on the election, based on what's coming next. But the reality is when you add up all of this, Inflation is not going away, it's only going to get worse. So the time to protect yourself is now, outside of the dollar, in physical gold and silver, tangible gold and silver, a safe store of value, so that you can make sure that as the dollar's value keeps getting chipped away at, you're protected, you have your insurance policy in place, and you are ready to weather the storm. That's what I want for everyone. And I know you want that for yourself too. So if you are concerned about any of this, click on the Calendly link in the description below, set up a time with one of our expert analysts who have decades of experience in helping people to protect themselves, to create a strategy to make sure that your concerns are addressed and your goals are in place so that on the other side of all of this, you are in an opportunity. You are in a position of opportunity. And if you think you already have a plan in place and you want a second opinion, that's great too. Call us, I have the number below. Talk to a member of our team, you won't regret it. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more in the coming weeks about this. I will continue to keep you updated as we learn more and as we see the impacts of this play out. But in the meantime, I so appreciate you being here. I'm Taylor Kenny with ITM Trading, your trusted source for all things gold, silver, 
and lifelong wealth protection. Until next time.